What? 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 Map. What? 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 Map. So you might want to make some simple water if you haven't got the budget for um, a high-end fluid simulator or something. Or, you know, you might want to make some gobbledygook that I've just sprayed all over this kettle for no reason. But if you do, obviously, it's not going to make wet maps for you. So um, I've come up with a few ways to make wet maps by extracting a black and white map. To get a wet map, all we have to do is create a, a black and white map. So wherever it's wet and wherever it's not. Um, if you've got a simple scene, like say you've just, all, all you've got is this sort of water on the beach and it's, it's nice and flat. Um, one really simple way uh, of doing that is to just simply cast a shadow of this water onto the sand. Go into lights, just chuck in a, a free direct light. Turn shadows on. Um, for some reason, ray trace shadow doesn't work, so we want to make sure it's advanced. Uh, and then with the directional parameters, we just want to increase this radius so that it covers our whole uh, sand object. Turn on two-sided just to make sure. So turn the bias right, right down. And now if we do a quick render, you'll see that we've got shadows cast down here onto our sand. So if we if we just um, right click on our on our uh, water and we just tick off visible to camera and we do a render again, you'll see now we've got our shadow um, how we want it on the sand. So now we can just click on the sand, press zero to go to render to texture yeah, so you just want to make sure that you have use existing map channel ticked. Uh, then what we want to do is we just want to add. And we want to make sure we choose shadows map. And all that's going to do is render just the shadows, nothing else. So in here we'll just, you know, go to a place where you want to save your map. I always, I save it as PNGs. Just click 1K. 1K is fine for now. Uh, and down here, you want to make sure that render to files is ticked. So that it doesn't, when it renders, it doesn't apply that to any material or make anything else for you. All, all it does is render it out to a file. Uh, we can just click render. And here you go. This is where the water is going to be. So it may look like it's obviously like it's black and the color of the sand, but when it saves the file, it, it doesn't look like this at all. It, it, only, only, it only shows a shadow where the shadow is and white where there's no shadow. So it'll be completely black and white. So now to render it out as a sequence, uh, all you do is go to the render settings and make sure you tick sequence. And next time you click render, it's going to render this out as an animated image sequence. All right, so you might have a more complicated scene where you can't just use a light coming down from the top. All we want to do is create a, a black and white map where your fluid is touching the object. The first thing you should check is see which renderer you're using first. For instance, I'm using Corona Renderer, and with that, I can create a distance map. So if I drag this distance map out and then just just create a standard material, uh, I'll pop this this um, distance map into the diffuse color. Now if I if I put the diffuse on the on the kettle and so now we can actually pick an object that will affect the distance. Now if we select our, uh, our our GAC here that we've got so we'll just hide the mesh so we can't see it. Now, if we give it a quick render, uh, it see it's not working out very well straight off the bat. But because the distance is zero, it's great, but the far distance is fading off to 100 centimeters. So we'll bring that in as close, close to like one centimeter. Give it another render, see what's happening. Now you can see that it's sort of, it's, it's detecting our edges a lot better. Uh, but we can bring that in, bring that in even more. So we can change it like right down to say, uh, 0.1 and that'll give it a really sharp edge. Yep, so it's got a sharp edge, but you see that it's so sharp that it's almost, it hasn't got any inside. So what we'll do is, because we just want to um, keep it a simple black and white color, we'll just tick color inside and we'll tick out, we'll select completely black. And now that'll fill the inside for us. And there we go. So now we've got our uh, black and white wet map using a distance map. So now you can just render this diffuse color to texture. Say so if your renderer doesn't have a distance map and you just that's just no option, you can't use it. One way you can do it is is if you just stick to scanline renderer for now, 
So add a standard skylight. And then over here on the settings, click on sky color, just make it 100% white. Now tick cast shadows. And then you can bring your samples right down to say five, just so it renders a bit quicker, because that doesn't matter that much. And your bias, you want to try and just lower that to as close as possible. Now, is this light is basically going to create ambient occlusion on our kettle. It's going to act like it's bringing light from every every direction. So if we hide our uh, our backdrop at the moment, because we don't want to cast shadows on that, and then we'll just click on our kettle, uh, press uh, zero, and that'll bring up our render to texture option. All right, so now if we do a quick render, so you can see how uh, you get you get the splotches where our um, where our goop is, but you see these little circles that we've got here, and we've got circles with a little bit of ambient occlusion um, in a lot of places as well, and that's caused because that's actually not just the goop is causing shadows, the actual kettle itself is causing some ambient occlusion. So we just want to go on the kettle, and we just want to tick this cast shadows off. So it's only going to receive the shadows from the goop. So now if we render again, now you can see that it got rid of all those unwanted sh um, shadows on the kettle that we didn't need. And now we've just got the goop um, shadows. Import your image sequence into After Effects and just make a comp out of it. And now you'll see that we've got our, uh, we've got the shadows, the ambient occlusion shadows that we just rendered from our kettle. So, You'll notice, obviously, this isn't going to work very well as a wet map because of the, um, see this softness that you've got up here. So what we want to do is we want to get rid of that softness. So we'll just um, right click, go on effect, and we'll go down to stylize, add a threshold, and and that'll bring the colors closer together. So we've still got this um, this mess here. So we're just going to bring the level down closer to zero so that we get as close to black as, as we can. So maybe just set it to say, let, let's set it to one. And we've got it closer to the wet map, but we've still got this fuzz that's sort of happening. See up here, you've got this fuzz as I play it, it's really fuzzy. So we just want to get rid of that noise. So we'll just go into um, noise and grain, we'll add a median, and that will just take the colors around it and sort of get rid of, sort of blend them together. So we'll just increase this, so we'll, let's set it to one and see what happens. All right. So that's got rid of it a little bit more. So if we play that, you know, it's, it's getting better, but it's still pretty noisy. So we'll increase that a lot. So let's just increase it to four and see what happens. All right, so now you can see we've got rid of a lot of that noise. So now we can use this as our wet map. So now um, we can just, uh, lastly, we can just quickly invert this. So go to invert, now we've got this ready to turn into a wet map. All right, so now, now that you've got your uh, black and white map, however you decided to make it, now we can make a wet map out of it. So bring it into After Effects, but what we want to do is um, we want to invert this so that our, our white is actually the fluid. So all we have to do there is just click on Effect, go to Channel, and do Invert. So now once we've got the black and white map, we just want to create a new comp, um, create a new comp out of our shadows map. So as the water, um, say here, as the water goes, goes up and then leaves its mark and comes back down, you want, you want this to stay behind a bit and then gradually fade away. And there is a effect in After Effects called, um, what is it, echo? So there's this echo effect. Um, but I found that doesn't work very well. Um, it doesn't really, it doesn't give you the flexibility that you need to make um, a good wet map. So I base, I just went and wrote my own. I'm going to put a link in the description so you guys can download this script and use it, um, or you can just have a quick look now and just copy this, um, copy this script how it is and, and write your own around it. But basically, the way it works is it just uh, it takes the composition. It makes a freeze frame for every single frame. Um, it gives it some opacity keys um, going from, uh, so it'll start at 100%, uh, and then it'll, um, it'll uh, uh, over a certain amount of time, it'll reach 0%. 
Um, and there's also a little value in here called quick dry, which I added, which means you can set a, a value for it to drop really quick. So it might start at 100%, but then after one second, it'll quickly drop to, um, say 10% or whichever percentage you want it to drop to really quick after one second. Um, but you can come in here and you can adjust these settings how you want. Um, you can even add more keyframes. Just copy and paste this um, and add as many keyframes as you want. Um, and that's pretty much how it works. So I'm not a programmer or anything, so it's probably got a whole bunch of stuff in it that's going to screw up if you don't do it in the right order. So just if you do something wrong, just, you know, recreate this comp and then run the script again. Make sure you click on the layer and then just go to File, Scripts, Run Script, and then run it. And then it'll give you a quick prompt, so overall drying time in seconds. So I've just got the default values to, to how I think works pretty well. So eight seconds works pretty well, so just click OK. So now it's gonna tell you, it's gonna give you an option to adjust the quick dry percentage. So, so after one second, it's gonna drop to 10% opacity and you can change this if you want um, but like I said I just I just prefer these so I just kept them as default click OK and now you'll see down here the script has done its magic and it's just offset every frame and then it, it gradually fades down the opacity so now see how this goes down it stays up there but then it gradually sort of fades away Sort of like that. So now uh, over eight seconds, it's going to go completely dry. Um, now you can just render this out uh, as an image sequence and then bring it back into your 3D application as a mask. All right, so now back in Max, we can just go to uh, the material. Um, so I'm using Corona once again. Um, this will be different based on what renderer you're using. Uh, but the way I do it is I just create, so I create one material up here. I'll just give it some sort of, uh, you know, some sort of sand color. And one way you can do this is to just, you know, use the reflection. If it's 100% reflected and 100% glossy, it's going to look wet, right? Uh, you can just import as a, a general bitmap. Click your first image, then down here, click sequence and then open. And now this will bring it in as an image sequence. So the, the quickest way is to just drag this into a reflection color and reflection gloss. We have to increase this to one so that it works. So now if we apply this material to the sand, uh, hide the water so we can see what's going on, give it a quick render, and there you go. So now you can see that uh, it's wet here and it's dry here based on the map. And that's uh, that's all there is to it. So cheers! Thanks for watching. Uh,